Hi everyone, happy Sunday night. This is Karen with Naturally with Karen. And I'm sitting over here at the Rose Garden in Duluth having taken a lovely walk from the Rose Garden to the Lighthouse on the Minnesota side and back from the Lighthouse to the Rose Garden. I'm sitting here, I've got my nice mug of matcha uh, latte made vegan with coconut milk for a creamer. And I thought that I would do a really quick live stream called Kid Food and the Kraken. Now, I've done body work. I got um, certificated or certified to be a massage therapist in 1997 by Stuart Grace in Los Gatos, California, where I'm a native of 42 years before I moved to Minnesota. And so I did a little bit of massage for people I never intended to parlay that certificate out as any form of, you know, remuneration, like make money from doing massage. But when I got to Cloquet, Minnesota, um, I had made a decision not to move to the Twin Cities where I had a connection to work with another law firm and to stay closer to some folks. And so when I did that, I also needed to be able to support myself. And I thought, well, you know, you paid uh, thousands of dollars to get this. So bless up, Pam. So why not, you know, put the massage certification, uh, you know, to work and also gain some great experience. Um, I wanted to also infuse doing my wellness work with people, and so that's what I did. A lot of sharing and hearing stories and caring. A lot of manually moving inflammation. But being as how my son was six, almost seven at that time, and we had moved from Santa Cruz where we were going to every Wednesday without fail, the 2 to 6 o'clock farmer's market except for maybe a few months during the winter when it was rainy in Santa Cruz we would go to the farmer's market at Pacific Garden Mall in downtown Santa Cruz. My son would always enjoy an ice-cold pomegranate juice which is a blood cleaner and a blood purifier and we would get fresh flowers, we would get fresh avocados from the guy that sells all the avocados, we would get fresh honey sage honey usually which is a really light honey at the Pacific Garden Mall farmers market every Wednesday and we would sometimes go to the one at Cabrillo College where I went to school so he and I were used to living very very close to the ocean where there's an iodine mist I put that together and it's one of the nuggets in my book detox and heal your thyroid but having the pomegranate juice and the smoothies and the fresh foods because a lot of people claim California is the land of fruit and nuts when I moved up here and they mean that a little bit in a negative way but we're largely much 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 stronger plant-based eaters than other places that have a longer stronger winter I know that now from 17 years of living in Minnesota so um, kid food my son would start to go to other, you know, children's homes and, you know, some of the parents would come to me and I'd say, oh, okay, you know, what do you want to have or, you know, do you want me to bring something for a birthday party or a get together? And they'd say, well, we're just going to have kid food. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, we're going to have buttered noodles or we're just, we got a couple of frozen pizza or, you know, we've got a tater tot hot dish. Kids love that. You know, we've got ice cream and we've got chips and all those kind of junky stuff that kids like. And I thought to myself, Pablo's whining for a blanket. I thought to myself, oh my goodness, you know, children have their brain developing, their neurological systems are forming. And what ends up happening down the road is what I'm going to explain with the Kraken. And, and that's because that's kind of like, you know, a name that I've was kind of like a funny spin on a few things but not to make fun of anyone that's not what I mean to do because we've all been the Kraken from time to time so kid food so if you take someone who's seven eight nine years old and they were living on pomegranate juice and fresh foods and smoothies because the parent can control the diet more and the parent was a strong plant-based eater and then a child gets a taste for frozen pizzas. Cheese is extremely addictive. Uh, wheat is extremely addictive the way it's made today. The combination of wheat and cheese is beyond addictive. Pizza is something that a lot of folks that I'm, 
you know, very close friends and family with that are Africans and so on don't really see it as food at all. But in America, we consider it food and many of us, you know, I grew up on a standard American diet. But when, you know, children start to go out into other people's homes and go into the schools, and if they were eating a really, really clean diet, you know, plant-based, lots of foods, lots of colors, lots of organics, and their taste buds become hijacked and addicted by the pastas and the pizzas and the ice creams and the go-gurts and all these kinds of things, it starts to take a toll. And what I've seen it do personally is create migraines fluid accumulation because the thyroid starts to slow. More pressure in the brain, so more isolating and avoidant behaviors. More skin issues. And I had a client 15 years ago who came to me and brought her whole family for massage. She was a major business owner in the area, she and her husband. And she'll be anonymous so no one can figure out who this is and confidentiality wise. And her daughter first, as a young teenager, developed rosacea. And she asked me, and I suggested two or three things, which actually would have worked. Now, after they did not make those changes, but they went to the doctor for the young teenage girl's rosacea, eventually I started noticing a butterfly-like rash on her face. This is a cloquet girl who's now in her 20s and older than my own son who just turned 24. But this is over 15 years ago. So then I started to notice this, this, you know, it was almost like you could see it energetically on the face. And since I'm looking at energy as well as looking with my physical eyes, right? We all look and you, you know you're looking at energy because you might say something like, your coloring is kind of off. Or your energy seems like it's kind of not, you know, how it should be or something. You just seem like something's off. That's when you're sensing someone's energy and not just looking at them. There's a difference between just looking at them with the physical eyes and sensing them with all of your senses. This is something we all do and especially we females, we do that. Okay? So eventually she went from rosacea into autoimmune. She went into lupus. Okay? The doctors gave her prescriptions and nothing was ever mentioned about her diet. Um, I was discharged as a care provider, as a medicine woman, because it just seemed like to them like what I had to offer wasn't going to be as clinically sound, as evidence-based, or as effective on some level as it might have been if they actually would have stayed the course. So now the young woman still has autoimmune and it's deeper and it's affected her on many other levels. Whoops. For some reason I've got like a little invite thing that popped up. So eventually what happens is clients come to my table for massage and they start to have a lot of cracking in the body. So now they're in their 20s, they're in their 30s, they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, even a client of mine that is 80. And so, which is not old, but it's old in the sense that our bodies are starting to have some of these issues. So the toes, when you start to work on a person and you turn the neck, you notice that there's not the range of motion anymore. They can't turn their neck all the way. They're starting to elevate, you know, the chin up when they're laying down on the table. The neck isn't able to be flat anymore. So now you've got to start putting a pillow under their neck because of the change in the arch of the neck and eventually chiropractors will see a lot more kyphosis. Kyphosis is where we start to develop an unnatural curvature of the cervical spine because of the fact that we're all looking down at our phones all the time. Okay, If you look around you, you'll see the predominance of people in this position with their neck. So kyphosis is something that's starting to happen and people will build subluxations or by way of eating these starches and cheese and dairy because we're starting our children off with kid food, then they start to build up starch accumulation 
and the starch accumulation causes them to have the cracky fingers, right? People say, God, I just got to crack my joints. My toes just need to crack. You know, can you crack my toes when they're on the table? When I go to, you know, kind of move the foot, I'm holding the foot in the cradle of my hand when they're on the massage table. And I want to, you know, uh, just kind of loosen up their ankles a little bit on their feet. So you kind of like turn them just a little bit after you've kind of worked the toes. You massage the feet. You want to get circulation into the ankle, into the calves. And you notice that the ankle is starting to crack. You notice that the arms start to crack when you're moving them up and down or you're moving them up high. You know, different areas. And then when you're working on the hip cradle and you bring your hands up, you know, on the top of the legs, you've got, the, you've got them draped real nicely so nothing's exposed. And you start to work on the hip cradle, you can feel the gristle. You can feel the double band of, you know, the ring around the neck which is starch accumulation and it starts to cause this cracking of the joints of the you know the different areas of the body like the toes and the ankles the knees you know the arms the elbows the fingers the neck we start to have a lot of cracking so that's what I wanted to say today that's just what I wanted to share I'm trying to block because it's got a little bit of the super glare because it's just a beautiful sunshine right now I hope you're all doing well. I hope you make it a wonderful Monday. And thanks for joining me.